After scrapping Labor's smoke-free programme, the government has now moved to make access to other tobacco products easier. The Associate Health Minister, Casey Costello, has halved the excise tax on heated tobacco products, saying they could be a tool to help Kiwis quit smoking. But the Ministry of Health says there's no evidence to support that. Natasha Payne reports. It might look like a vape, but this is a heated tobacco product, better known as HDP, and they're about to become a lot cheaper here in New Zealand. Because heat not burn is less harmful to your health uh, than smoke tobacco, uh, we think it should be taxed less. Associate Health and Customs Minister Casey Costello decided to halve the excise tax on HDPs, revealing the decision on the customs website. New Zealand First believe the product will help smokers quit, but health experts say it's just a way for tobacco companies to rebrand. We know that tobacco companies have been trying to develop a transformation narrative where they're trying to convince policymakers that they're moving out of combusted tobacco products, which we know are really harmful. Because the devices heat the tobacco rather than burn it, it's meant to contain less nicotine, therefore be less addictive. But there is limited evidence to back that up. But HTPs aren't the only products causing concern. Nicotine pouches are marketed as a way to help smokers and vapors give up, but Professor Hock says they're designed to appeal to young people. We can see that the packaging is really cool. It's the kind of thing that young people will be interested in. The pouches get placed in the mouth and release nicotine into the blood and have surged in popularity thanks to social media videos. You know, it's, it's vaping 2.0. Currently, they aren't widely available in New Zealand, but they can be brought online. Vape Free Kids New Zealand say they had a heated meeting with Costello back in March about what the government would do if the pouches made their way to New Zealand and they were left disappointed. Her answer was that she'd regulate them so we knew that day that they were coming whether we want or need them. Costello gave Free News a statement this afternoon regarding her reason behind the tax cuts. She said this government wants to see smokers quit and the quit smoking providers she's spoken to have said the more useful tools available, the better. Smoke Free Expert Advisory Member and Tobacco Researcher at the University of Auckland, Professor Chris Bullen, joins me now to talk more about this exactly. So I just want to be clear, what exactly are these heated tobacco products? Not cigarettes, not vapes? No, they're somewhere in between. So um, they heat uh, tobacco in the same way that you might toast tobacco but you don't burn it. Cigarettes burn tobacco. Uh, vapes uh, uh, vaporise nicotine. These are tobacco products and they just sort of toast the tobacco and brown it and it gives off a vapour that people inhale. OK, and it's supposed to be sort of healthier because it's not, it's not burning it as such. That's right. It's uh, probably safer than cigarettes, but mm. the evidence around that is uh, relatively uh, in, in sort of evolution. Uh, the real question is, do they help people to quit smoking? And what, what is the answer to well, that? Well, the answer is there's no independent evidence to support that contention. So what did you make of this move today to make these products cheaper in New Zealand? Well, I was flabbergasted. Uh, I can see where the Minister's going in her argument around uh, trying to um, have uh, more products available, but uh, an, a product that isn't based on good research evidence for showing that it actually helps smokers to quit seems to me to be uh, playing with fire. Ha has, has tobacco in New Zealand ever become cheaper? Because no. I've only ever seen the it's tax always, go up. It's always gone up. It's so the it's single most important tool in controlling tobacco use anywhere in the world. OK, and you're flabbergasted by that. So, so Minister Costello, though, she said, look, this is just another tool. You know, vaping has shown mm -hmm. that people can, can quit smoking and they take up vaping instead and, and reduce uh, their nicotine mm -hmm. addiction. But do you think this is going to help with that as well? Uh, well, it's, um, there's no evidence that it will help uh, smokers to quit smoking. There is a risk that it might help recruit uh, people who've never smoked to using these products. Talk to me more about that, so, because I wondered whether it could actually increase addiction just of that new product. Right. So there will be people who, have, uh, who substitute uh, cigarettes and use these heated tobacco products. They may reduce their harm slightly, but we don't have any evidence that that actually takes place. In fact, the only um, sort of independent evidence comes from Japan, where people use both heated tobacco products and continue to smoke tobacco. So they don't really get much benefit from it and they're not quitting. So I'm uh, not persuaded at this point in time that they are a useful tool in our objective to get towards smoke-free 2025.
And who do you think has benefited from this decrease in the excise tax of 50%? Do you think it is, it is people who are trying to quit smoking or is it the people making the tobacco products? Well, I think it's clearly the people making the tobacco products who stand to gain. They'll make more sales, price goes down, people will try them out because the price point is much more attractive than it currently is. And, uh, and I don't think it's going to be um, necessarily a, a good thing uh, overall for um, achieving our goal. Uh, just finally, I wonder, what, what's your view today? Because this was this was quietly rolled out on the customs website. There yep. was an announcement, wasn't an announcement around it. We didn't hear from the minister, Casey Costello. What's your view on how that was handled? Well, um, Health uh, Coalition Aotearoa, which I'm speaking on behalf of, we're concerned about the lack of transparency about this particular incident, but more generally about what's in the minister's mind and who she's been talking to to inform her decisions, because they're certainly not coming from the uh, policy advice given by people in the Ministry of Health, and that's clear. So who is it who's giving her the advice? It seems that she's playing into the hands of uh, big tobacco. And what would ideally be the next move, do you think, from your point of view? Well, I think the Minister should be, if she's uh, intent on going down this pathway, uh, she should uh, think about changing her mind. She is talking about it as an experiment of some sort, a trial. If it's genuinely a trial, it needs to be monitored and watched carefully. And, and if it's not working, then change the uh, policy again. So I would encourage her to put some parameters in place for monitoring and make some decisions around whether it's uh, making a difference to smoking. How, how, long should, how long should she leave it, do you think? I think she should leave it for as limited a time as possible, but probably no more than a few months, if she's going to persist with it. OK. Well, thank you so much for your time, Professor Chris Bullen. I really appreciate you coming into the studio tonight.